ability of 100%. Now, why are we showing this? Yeah. Whose call was it to put this on the screen? I mean, I mean, my God, what? what you're insulting the intelligence of like 100,000 live viewers right now. I don't. Yeah, thanks, thanks. We we thought it was 65 still. I don't know. I mean, eight minutes left, 11 point lead. So let's do some calculations. Yeah. 20 seconds per win. If Ali Reza pre-moves every move for the rest of the match, he gives himself a chance. Just put a picture up of like a... And he's kind of doing that right now. Of, of like a cat or the Eiffel Tower sparkling or, I don't know, something. The Sen. Okay? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're kind of dis... Right, this, is, this, is, this is just messed up, man. That's not cool, all right? We told you guys that the players watch the stream after it's over. You're going to be hearing from Team Faruja. I'm just telling you guys, the, the, uh, that wasn't us, all right? That wasn't us. Well, I think it's, it's becoming a smarter chess better never show his face because it's becoming a commentator tradition to throw the proverbial rotten tomatoes. You know, Adam, it's yeah, like I, the the, no, the the person that makes everyone unite in their collective, you know, collective anger. Yeah, I, Danny, I feel like every smarter chess prediction has been wild. Like it was 65-35 and, oh. and, and Magnus. Look at that by Ferruja by the bishop f6 trying to deflect the queen. Yeah, I, I appreciate your efforts in still analyzing the chess. I white has three pieces and black has two. What can I say? Yeah, yeah. This Sorry, white has two, black has one. Oh, I thought for oh oh god, it's it's a twelve game lead. Okay, now one person applauded. Yeah. And it's basically yeah, it's 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 all Magnus. I mean, what can you say? By the way, I, I've suggested a rule change. I said that at at five minutes left in the bullet, you should be able to to call it if you're losing. By, by I don't think there is a soul on this earth who would who would uh, reject this. Ali Reza Faruja will be eternally grateful for you if this rule is instituted. But you have to tip your hat to him. A second place finish in the SCC. Yes, of course. By the hometown favorite. Obviously, his match against Sicaro will enter the, I think, annals of the greatest uh, SCC performances. Maybe to re to be replaced by this one. But Ali Reza has had an incredible six month run and. Let me tell you, I am looking forward to watching his next candidate's performance, even though that's very far away. We have the Olympiad coming up, Levy, but he has been incredibly resilient in a career that's been longer than people might think. You know, he's 21. He's been a GM for seven years. He's been 2,700 for, I think, four or five years. And when you have that much experience at that young of an age, that's really scary for your opponents. For sure. It's scary for every opponent not named Magnus, right? And it's, it's quite wild how well he performed today. He obviously rose to the occasion. And the question with Ferruja is not about if, it's about when. And yeah, the big question mark remains about the candidates tournament, of course. Chess has historically put a lot of weight mm -hmm. on the candidates and the world championship cycle, of which Ferruja has struggled the last two times, but he wins basically everything else getting second in the speech chess championship and i wonder how hikaru feels at the moment you know because he wasn't able to instill this level of hesitancy mm -hmm. in ali reza ali reza clearly showed up for that match super fired up and he got it done he got it done hikaru had some early comebacks but ali reza never wavered and he played better and better to continue this match oh my gosh you you really literally wish the bishop on h1 were gone because that would allow white to prolong the yep. game yep Four and a half minutes, folks, left in an unforgettable weekend of action. We know who the winner is going to be. This line. Yeah, this is a wild line. It is indeed. And Ali Reza, maybe this was what he needed earlier in the match. But all the armchair generals, all the uh, wannabe Napoleons, they're, they're going to come out after this match. But you try sitting down and playing Magnus. I've tried, and I don't recommend it to a lot of people. No, no. And, and, and it will be fun if the guys downstairs ask him like does he think he's a 65 35 against Ferruja he'll he'll definitely have uh, some nice things to say he is very complimentary and and he has touted Ferruja as his uh, you know his successor to the throne mm -hmm. in many ways but I also do wonder did that put unnecessary pressure on Ferruja was it gamesmanship was it the ultimate form of Putting pressure on, on on a young man, of course, it's I'm I'm exaggerating, but you know to hear that from the best player in the world is it's simultaneously infuriating and infinitely validating. Correct. To know that if you get to the world champion, you're the only person world championship. You're the only person on the planet 
who the world champion is interested enough to play. And yet, the expectation that that creates to win the candidates tournament is insane. I mean, the pressure at that tournament, you feel it from the commentator's desk, it's unbelievable. And, and Faruja has many more candidates' participations left in his career. He's 21, for goodness sake. People seem to forget that. They think that he's 101 sometimes. Honestly, I don't think the discourse on the internet. I, I feel like we say it all the time. And, no, uh, no, 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 no. Rookie seven yeah, is rookie, coming. Rookie seven and. Lucky lead number 13. Yeah, King is going to take the bishop. And, and another check. check and, and another capture. Yep. And another win. And we might have one game left. But at the speed at which Faruja played that game, he lost like 10 seconds on the clock. We might have two games left. This is an exchange Spanish, which is a line I used to play a lot when I was about seven, eight years old. I always enjoyed these positions, uh, you know, down at the local uh, chess tournaments against my fellow seven and eight-year-olds. That bullet point just didn't make it onto the 2004 list back when Levy Rosman, and I actually was also playing this line at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were the good days. I got so nervous in my second chess tournament, I forgot how to notate castling. And I asked my opponent, and then he told me, oh, oh. And then he beat me in like 10 moves. So I had a very funny chess career in my first two tournaments. I went 4-0 and in my first one because I was better than everybody. And then I went 0-4 in my next one because I was worse than everybody. And, you went 4-0 uh, and or you went 4-0-0? Four, four and oh, oh. I went 4-0-0, and oh, oh, yeah. Okay. I, 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 but I, I lost all the games of my second tournament. I didn't oh, give up. Oh, boy. Yeah. I didn't, uh, I didn't stop. And a uh, friendly PSA to anybody watching this before we close the show and take it to the interviews is you really should play chess in person. I think over the last three to four years, uh, millions of people have gotten into chess online, but there's really nothing quite like playing in person, whether it's competitive or community. Like, why does anybody do any hobby? To feel a sense of community, part of a community, or to improve at something and use your time wisely. So, yeah, do it. And Levy, let me say this. First of all, in person, on the whether you're playing on the computer or on the board, that matters less than sitting in the same room facing each other. I have not seen a group of people in the 2000 teens look at their phones less over the course of many hours than this awesome crowd here. Uh, when they looked at their phones, it was to look at Twitch or YouTube. Every one of these matches has had their own unique character. They've captured the attention of everyone watching. I cannot believe there's under a minute left in the SEC Finals. This weekend felt like it would never arrive, and now it goes by so quickly. That's always what happens with events that everybody anticipates. But I don't think there's a single person who's watched any part of this and feels like they didn't get what they signed up for. You know that feeling when we board the plane tomorrow is going to be so sad? Because you just yeah. remember boarding the plane here, and now you're going home, and there's going to be... Well, there was a three-hour delay, so I definitely Correct. remember. Correct, yeah. That's, um, that's flying out of the States. It's going to be special. It's going to be really special. You can't wait for the next one. But the good news is top-level chess returns in literally like four days at the Olympiad. So Yeah, withdrawal and chess never last light. It's just you get one tournament, everyone's sad. And everyone's, I miss this, and the next tournament starts, and Magnus has won. And he's won. The SEC is over. The ticker goes to zero. And by a 16-point margin, Magnus Carlsen claims the SEC title for the second year in a row. Dominant. Absolutely dominant. We see the handshake there. And he simply came to play. What more can you say? We just watch the 10-year world champion, the guy who reached the highest rating in chess history, add another feather to his cap. It seemed that was impossible, but every time he just defines what is possible in chess, he defeats Hans.